Howdy. Welcome to part three of partial fractions. So we've learned how to decompose. We've done an easy example. Now let's do a pretty hard example. So let's talk about how to decompose this fraction right here. Take a look at this x squared. Don't think of x squared as quadratic. Instead, what I want you to think of x squared as, I want you to think of this as x squared, meaning that this is a linear function that is being repeated. And so because of that, one less than a linear is a constant. I'm going to have a constant a over x. But because I have two of them, I need to repeat again. And so I'll put an arbitrary constant b over that x squared. So if you ever see x squared, that's how you decompose it. If you had x cubed, you'd have a over x plus b over x squared plus c over x cubed and so forth. But now let's take a look at this next up parentheses, this x squared plus 9. With the x squared plus 9, that's an irreducible quadratic. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an arbitrary linear function, cx plus d, over that x squared plus 9. And this is how you decompose it. Now remember, this is equal to that whole big fraction, the whole big 2x cubed plus 11x squared plus 18 all over x squared times x squared plus 9. Okay, what we need to do is we now need to solve for a, b, c, and d. And the way you get rid of the fractions is I multiply both sides by that original denominator. I multiply both sides by x squared times x squared plus 9, and I'm going to distribute that into each letter, into everything. I'm going to shoot that into there. So, let's take a look at the A. Notice that whenever I distribute this into the A fraction, this X will only cancel with one of the X's here. And so what this is going to be left with is X times X squared plus 9. However, with the B, the X squared will completely cancel the X squared. So you're just going to be left with X squared plus 9. Now let's take a look at the cx. With the cx, notice how when I multiply that into this fraction, x squared plus 9, x squared plus 9 would cancel. So I'm left with just x squared. And then finally with the d, once again the x squared plus 9's cancel, and so d is just going to be multiplied by x squared. And on the right side, when I multiply this into the original fraction, that's going to completely cancel, and so you're just left with the numerator which is 2x cubed plus 11x squared plus 18. Okay, now that we've gotten rid of the fractions, let's try to get as many freebies as possible. And remember, what a freebie is, a freebie is something where I can strategically plug in an x value to cancel out all but one of the uh, letters. And I can do that at x equals 0. Because when I plug 0 into every x, the a is going to go away, the c is going to go away, the d is going to be go away, and I'll be able to isolate my b. And so by plugging 0 into x, I'll be left with a 9 times b. And when you plug 0 in on the right side, 0 plus 0 plus 18 is just 18. Hey, so it tells me that b is equal to 2. So that's cool. But unfortunately, that's it. That's the only free b I can get. The last one I was able to solve for all my letters using freebies. This is where a lot of people get stuck. At this point, what I want you to do what I want you to be thinking of. You don't have to write this down every time, but what I need you to be thinking, I need you to be thinking expand and compare. Okay? You're going to expand and compare. Let me explain what I mean by expand. For expand, you want to make sure that everything just here is distributed. Okay? So this A, when I distribute that X into the parentheses, is going to be multiplied by an X cubed plus 9X. The B, it's cool. So b times x squared plus 9. Uh, the c, x times x squared. I'm going to have a c, x cubed. And the d, he's fine. d, x squared. And this is equal to the 2x cubed plus 11x squared plus 18. This is what I mean by expand. Here's what I mean by compare. Look for your highest exponent. Here our highest exponent is going to be an x cubed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare x cubes on the left side of the equal sign and x cubes on the right side of the equal sign. On the left side, 
notice if I was to fully expand this, I would have an ax cubed and a cx cubed. So I have an a plus cx cubed. And whenever you would combine those together, that ax cubed plus cx cubed, that better come out to 2x cubed. Because I have 2x cubed there on the right side. Well, I still can't find anything because I don't know either a or c. So move on to the next term. The next term is x squared. Okay, so let's compare x squareds. Uh, let's see, I've got a bx squared. I guess I've got a bx squared. And uh, I've got a dx squared. So if I was to fully expand it, I'd have a b plus dx squared. And whenever you do that, that should come out to 11x squared. So b plus d needs to equal 11. Now this tells me a lot. This tells me a lot. Because I know what b is. b is 2. So here, 2 plus d is equal to 11. It tells me that d is equal to 9. Awesome. Okay. So I've got the x squareds taken care of. Now let's uh, deal with the x's, because I still can't find a and c yet, so i got to move on to the next term. Now taking a look at the x's, notice you have a 9x right here multiplied by that a, so you would have a 9a times x. So I'd have a 9a times x, and that's it. I just have a 9a. Now how many x's do I have over here? Oh, crap, there's zero, right? There's, there's no x's there on the right side. And so it tells me that a is equal to zero, and that's okay. You don't have to have every letter. Some of those letters could be zero. But cool, now that I know that a is zero, I can here say zero plus c is equal to two. That's how you find a, b, c, and d. Whenever you can't get all your letters by doing freebies, you need to expand and compare. Now that I have a, b, c, and d, now I can integrate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the integral of a over x, which that's 0, so I don't have to worry about that, plus b over x squared, b that's 2, so I'm going to have 2 over x squared, plus cx plus d, so it's going to be 2x plus 9 over x squared plus 9 dx. 2 over x squared, that one's a pretty standard integral. Well, let's take a look at this one. You can't integrate this at least the way that it's written as is. But as I've done before, I want you to answer something for me real quick before I show you what to do there. What's 2 sevenths plus 3 sevenths equal to? Well, that's 5 sevenths, right? And how did we do that? We did that by doing 2 plus 3 over 7. The point is, whenever you have things added, subtracted on top, divided by a denominator, you can split this. You can split this into two separate fractions. I can make this 2 over 7 plus 3 over 7. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with this guy right here. What I'm going to do, this will be the integral of 2 over x squared plus, which is like here, I did 2 sevenths plus 3 sevenths. This is going to be 2x over x squared plus 9, plus 9 over x squared plus 9. And each of those you can integrate, okay? These are relatively straightforward integrals. The integral of 2 over x squared, if you make that 2x to negative 2 and do your basic rules of integration, that'll come out to a negative 2 over x. This middle one right here, 2x over x squared plus 9, that's going to be a u sub. Okay, so this right here is going to be a u sub. Hopefully you're comfortable with u sub at this point. After doing that u sub, you'd be left with the natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus 9. Now this one I want to talk about a little bit. Let me show you what this is real quick. Then I'll mention something. What this is going to be, this is going to be plus 3 times the arctangent of x over 3 plus c. Let me talk about that last one for a little bit. Okay, the integral of 1 over x squared plus a squared, or a is just some number. If you remember, the derivative of arctangent was 1 over x squared plus 1. But what this is going to be, whenever it's not 1 over x squared plus 1, whenever it's x squared plus some number, what you're going to do, this is going to be 1 over a times the arctangent of x over a, plus c. And so that's why for our example, had I had 1 over x squared plus 9, this 9, this is like 3 squared, right? And so your a is equal to 3. So what this is, this is 1 third times the arctangent of x over 3 
plus C. And the reason I have a 3 right there is because I had a 9 on top. And 9 times 1 third, that's where I got that 3. So definitely make sure you remember that. Um, they love doing the derivative of arc tangents, And it doesn't have to be an x squared plus 1. If it's an x squared plus some number, you need to remember how to take that into account. But this is your standard difficult partial fraction decomposition problem. Remember, if you can't solve for all your letters doing a freebie, expand and compare. And whenever you have something like this, some linear function over an x squared plus a squared, 100% of the time you will split this into two separate fractions. Because when you do that, this one is going to be a u sub. And the second one, the number over x squared plus whatever, is going to be an arc tangent. And definitely remember this. Um, the 1 over, the integral of 1 over some x squared plus a squared. That's going to be 1 over a times the arc tangent of x over a plus c. So this concludes part three of partial fractions. In the last video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do polynomial long division, but more specifically, when to do polynomial long division, how to do polynomial long division, and then we'll actually do a partial fraction integral. So join me for part four, and we'll deal with polynomial long division.